Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'll be showing you how I added some rust to this particular uh, car wreck artwork. This is part two, so be sure to check out part one so that you can see how I got up to this particular stage within the project. You'll notice that I'm using a transparent orange and I'm working over some of the body color and uh, some of those white highlights that I added and I'm creating our foundation for the rust and then I'll start to detail on top of that. The transparent orange is made up of transparent base mixed with reducer first to your liking and then adding drops of orange to that mix. Obviously the more orange that you add the quicker it will tint whereas if you add less it'll, it'll remain more transparent so just keep that in mind. If you don't have orange, obviously yellow and red will make orange and then you can add that just using those primary colours. The airbrush that I'm currently using is the Iwata CMC Plus Micron. If you're interested, I do have links to all the products used in this video in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. For everyone else that's been watching for a while, welcome back. If you are new to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the community. Feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that will notify you every time I put out new content. I usually do weekly videos, so lots of tutorials, uh, quick tips, showcase, much, much more. So if you do find that any of this content is helpful, then by all means, share it out on social and let's build this community together. Okay, so now that I'm happy with my transparent orange, I'm switching to brown. Again, this is tried and airbrush paint. This is the true brown, so it is quite a, a ready brown and uh, works really well for the second tone for our rust. So a little bit of uneven texturing for this tone. We're going to start to build that, that uh, unevenness in the rust areas just so that um, I can start to create that effect. I am working really close now due to the scale of this artwork it's quite small as you can tell so I need to be up nice and close to build that underlying texture. That way I can get uh, the more solid areas covered quite quickly but also accurately without overspraying everywhere and um, I'm also dusting from a distance. When I say from a distance I'm not too far away so that I'm getting overspray again everywhere so I'm very very cautious to keep that controlled.
So now that that true brown is pretty much done, I'm going to switch to my next color, which is transparent black. So this is a transparent base mixed with reducer, and then I add black to that so that I can control my intensity again. And um, obviously the more black you add, the quicker it's going to cover. So I like to have it sort of reasonably uh, dark for this particular artwork, but I don't want to have too much opacity as I don't want to eliminate all of my detail. So obviously with this tone I'm working all of my darker areas so just deepening my shadows so be very careful with this um, the beauty of using a transparent black is you could mix up a mid tone so um, just don't add as much black so that it's not as strong as what you see here and then use that one as a mid tone to sort of get used to the color before you go the real dark version So you can see how much this tone is really starting to shape and also build a bit more uh, texture within that rust and just cleaning up all the edges as well, pulling out that detail. So still working up nice and close, being very careful on my trigger finger not to pull back too far. And in any of the areas where I need that real defined edge, I'm utilizing my fire tool template set. So this is just one of the templates from that and I'm just using that as my freehand shield to get a nice, sharp, defined uh, edge where necessary. So this will add that contrast rather than, if you just work freehand, even if you've got really good control, it's very hard to get the same effect as when you would use a template. You just get that real sharp line, which is can also be a bad thing. Sometimes you don't want it as sharp. It can sort of look a bit uh, masked, masked out so by doing a mixture of both I find that sort of works for my style of artwork and what I'm trying to achieve so just uh, play around with it and, and sort of find your happy medium and go with that
You'll notice that I'm steadying my airbrush as well with my other hand, hence why I've got the glove on. So you'll see this quite uh, regularly in a lot of my videos, especially any of the automotive artwork. I like to wear a glove in my other hand so that that way I can uh, very safely rest up against the surface. As you've got to remember, this will be two-pack cleared at the end, so I like to keep the surface extremely clean and free from any possible oils that my skin may transfer onto the surface. And that could pose as a problem uh, once the clear goes on at a later stage. Okay, so now that I've finished rendering with my transparent black, I'm going to come in and hit some of the real defined highlights with white. And you'll notice that for the white I have switched to my CMSB Micron. This one runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup as opposed to the CMC Plus which you saw earlier. That runs a 0.23mm. Um, this also has a side cup so I do enjoy using this brush to do my fine work always towards the end of the artwork as I don't have any cup or anything obstructing my view. Plus it's also an added benefit that the needle nozzle setup is a bit finer. So because it is finer and I am using white, I tend to uh, really over thin my paint. So this mix would be approximately 30% or 35% paint with uh, 70 or 65% reducer. So very, very thin indeed. So you've got to be very careful when pulling back. Um, you will also notice that I do tend to let it spider, uh, when I say spider, sort of splurch out a little bit on the surface. Uh, this can help with uh, a particular artwork like I'm doing at the moment where you've got that rust and that real uneven sort of textures that you want to build up. You can use that uh, spider effect to help create that um, you know that sort of damage within the paint. It also works really well if you're doing any sort of rivets where you want um, a section of uh, a perfect sort of circle. If you control it well enough you can kind of pull back, get that paint to hit the surface, keep the air on and that'll um, blow that out quite accurately. But the key really is to work that double action uh, rest your airbrush up against your hand so you're nice and comfortable and um, just pull back ever so slightly and continue to move with the airbrush so that you don't stay in one spot for too long. I also uh, continually pick off the uh, tip drying so I've obviously edited that out of the video but I'm doing that very very frequently to make sure that my uh, needle is completely clean. I'll also blast it out every now and then just to make 100% sure that there is no obstructions and that I don't 
uh, get any bit that blasts out on the artwork or if um, you know the other option is that it can kind of leave a bit of a splattering because you're building up too much paint on the end of the needle so you don't want to risk that So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. This is just a quick recap to see how we started with this image and adding the rust. So we're finishing up with that. In part three, I'm going to show you how I airbrush the background. So until next time, thanks again for watching. Go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next tutorial. Bye for now.